Come on, why don't we lift up the name of Jesus right now with all hands lifted. God, we lift your name up, Jesus, because we know that your name gives us power over all darkness, over all defeat, over every sickness, over all lies. So Jesus, we proclaim your name boldly, knowing that in your name is victory. In your name is power. In your name, God, we have already won the battle. So Jesus, we lift up your name and we give you praise tonight because we know that you are in control. Come on, church, let's just begin to give Jesus the praise that he deserves. Let's lift up a shout of praise because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, just shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, everybody, to Wednesday night service. I'm so excited that you're here tonight. We're excited to be in the house of God tonight. Tonight is a great night. Um, our pastor and several of the teams right now, our pastors, Pastor Marco and Lisa, are in Uganda. And right now we are in the process of taking, uh, 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 covering over, over 60 churches. We're inheriting over 60 churches are becoming part of the Way World Outreach in the country of Uganda. They've already had a chance to um, to visit the orphanages and see some of the children there and even meet some of the, the families that are there. And it's just been so beautiful to see what God's going to begin to do. So I want us to just give God some praise and thanks for what he's doing out right now in the country of Uganda. And church, let us continue to keep our pastor lifted up in prayer right now and the whole team. And let's pray for them and let's pray tonight for this word. And tonight we're gonna to begin a new series that involves forgiveness and inner healing. It's a deep subject. And when we talk about forgiveness, especially in today's age, in today's cancel culture, in today's no mercy culture, where someone can fall in your life one time and be cut out for decades. Right now especially, we need forgiveness more than ever before. And what we're gonna to begin to learn throughout the series is that God has forgiven us of so much. And because of the power of his forgiveness, we can now forgive others. Because of what he has done for us, we can now do the same thing for other people. So I believe that after tonight, and after this series, it'll continue on Sundays and Wednesdays. I believe that in this process, we're gonna to begin to realize that some of us might be dealing right now with some unforgiveness towards somebody. You may be in that prison of unforgiveness, but the good news is Jesus has the key and he's ready to unlock every cell door, every prison, every chamber that we have been locked into because of unforgiveness. So let's bow our heads, let's open our hearts to the word tonight. God, we thank you. Tonight you're gonna to speak to each of us. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that you have a word for us tonight. Without you, Holy Spirit, we have no leadership, we have no guidance, we're living life aimlessly, our relationships, our marriages are broken, our families are falling apart. But I believe that this word will produce fruit in our families, in our marriages, and in our lives. And I believe we're gonna to begin to operate in the power of forgiveness. Holy Spirit, speak through me. And God, we pray a blessing over our pastor, Pastor Marco and Lisa, and the whole team that's out there right now. We pray a blessing and a covering over them and a protection over them. As they go and conquer the enemy's land, we come against every single uh, demonic attack and lie. Devil, we're serving you notice. We are coming on the offensive and we're taking territory and we're declaring war. You will not touch our pastors or our leaders. As a matter of fact, we're coming after everything that you thought you stole. We're coming after the country of Uganda in the name of Jesus. We declare it. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. You may be seated. Give your neighbor a high five. Awesome, I got the microphone. 
Hallelujah. Can you guys hear me better? Oh, praise the Lord. Your ears can relax now. You're like, what is he saying? So tonight, we're going to cover this topic of forgiveness. And as I said before, especially in this time, I believe that God is offering us a way out of the cycle of unforgiveness that we've been so trapped in. Some of us right now are dealing with pain, hurt, and suffering in our lives, even, even to the point that we're causing hurt towards other people because we have refused to forgive somebody that has hurt you. Now, I'm not saying that the people that have hurt you deserve to be forgiven, but in the same way that we didn't deserve the forgiveness of our Father, it's the same way that we should offer forgiveness to somebody that may not deserve it. You know, it's really easy to hold a grudge. It's really easy to be bitter. It's really easy to put your arms up when, when, you, when God is asking you to let your guard down and to set free people that you've been holding a grudge against. It's easy to push that away. But the strength really comes when we can finally let go and say, I forgive. After all the pain, after the betrayal, after the heartache, after the abuse, I'm willing now to forgive. Just imagine for a moment what it would feel like and what it would be like if we finally once and for all let go of the baggage that so easily weighs us down. How would life be if we finally surrendered the resentment that has been lingering in our hearts? How much clearer would we live? How much more could we love if we let go of the anger that is beneath the surface of our hearts? See, some of us right now are just, uh, we're like a ticking time bomb. We're just waiting for one more thing to happen before we explode. And what God is saying is, I'm ready to deal with all of that, the roots and everything inside, and finally set you free so that you can now be a vessel of my light, of my love, and of my forgiveness all over the world. And God is getting ready to set us up to be free. Just imagine embracing that freedom. Embracing the freedom that comes with saying, I choose to let go and to move forward. See, this is what forgiveness is all about. It may not be necessarily that I'm forgetting everything in the sense that I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm going back to the same old lifestyle that caused me to hold on to it. It's not necessarily that, but it is saying this, I'm no longer going to let unforgiveness take control of my future it won't have an impact on who I am going to be tomorrow. So we're going to talk about forgiveness in this series. But I want to talk first about how the world's idea is of forgiveness. This is the world's idea of forgiveness. And we know that the world believes that it's an eye for an eye. How you treat me is how I treat you. If you, uh, only if you stop hurting me, will I stop hurting you? This is the world's mentality of forgiveness. It's not forgiveness after all. That's just called making somebody pay for their mistakes. Just imagine if God treated us that same way. We offend God. We, we curse God with our lifestyles. We, we, we grieve the Holy Spirit in the way we live. We, we deny the voice of the Holy Spirit in, in leading us and guiding us, and we choose the world instead. And, and in all of this process, just imagine if God said, look at how much debt you owe. Now it's time for you to pay for all of it. Now, did you know that in order to pay for your sin, you know what it costs us? Death. And you know what death means? It really means eternal separation from God. It means eternally being separated from God forever. That means that the price for sin is eternity in hell. Oh, it got deep. I didn't mean to go that deep that quick. Stay with me. But this is the idea. This is the truth. Is that God loves us so much that he didn't say it's time for you to pay all your debt. Instead, he said, I'm going to rescue you by sending my son to pay for your debt. I'm going to send Jesus Christ to make up for all the sin that you've done. This is the true meaning of forgiveness. 
I'm paying it for you. Forgiveness isn't you must pay in order to come back into my life. You must pay in order for me to forgive you. You must do right by me in order for me to let go of the pain you caused me in my childhood. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is saying I'm willing to now let go. Not only am I willing to let go, I'm willing to bless you after you've hurt me. That's true forgiveness. And that is something that only through the power of God we can live by. Check this out, there's some crazy stats. It says that 58% of Americans believe there are instances when people should never be forgiven. There are 58%, that means the majority of people in this country think that there are some things that can be forgiven and there's some things that should never be forgiven. Man, I wonder again, if God held us to that standard and said, yeah, you lied, I'll forgive that. You cheated, I'll forgive that. But you, um, you let's just say you murdered, can't forgive it. Or you, um, you uh, broke the speeding limit. It's cool, it would have been good if it was only 10 miles over, but it was 15, can't forgive you. Just imagine if there were some qualification or some standard that God could forgive and couldn't forgive towards us. But this is the way the world sees forgiveness. I can forgive for some things, but we shouldn't forgive for other things. But this is the world standard, this is not God's standard of forgiveness. Look at another stat, it says 60% of Americans believe that forgiving someone first depends on the offender apologizing and making changes. That means this, I want you to perform and to make up for it in order for me to forgive you. Now remember, that isn't forgiveness at all. See, if we waited for the offender to apologize, some of us would wait our entire lives. And for some of us, um, the, the offender, the person that has hurt you, is no longer living. So how can we expect somebody that's no longer living to apologize and so in order for us to forgive them? But it's crazy that the majority of Americans believe, the majority of us believe that they have to say sorry and they have to change and make up for it in order for me to forgive them. Let me tell you something. It, with that kind of mentality, you will be miserable and you will be in pain for a long, long time. We cannot wait. See, the, the, with that kind of mentality, in other words, what we're saying is this. I'm letting the offender still lead my life. I'm waiting for the behavior of the person that has hurt me. I'm waiting for their behavior to determine my behavior still. You know what you're doing? You're still living under the trap and under the power of the person that has hurt you. And what God is saying is if you truly want to be free from the pain that they have caused you or the pain that your offender has done to you, this is how you can be free. Let it go, forgive them and bless them and be free. Be free once and for all. 83% of Americans believe we need more forgiveness in our communities. It's crazy that 83% of Americans believe we need more forgiveness. However, we're holding such a high standard for someone to be forgiven that we'll never see forgiveness. The world has this distorted view of love and forgiveness. With this view, the cycle never ends, leading to broke, more brokenness in families and causing more people to be hurt. But I wanna share very briefly a couple scriptures on what God's view of forgiveness is. And after we share these scriptures, I have an amazing story I wanna share with you of someone here in our church who has been able to forgive somebody for one of the most hurtful and harmful things that, I could, that I've ever heard. Look at what God says about forgiveness. It says, um, number one, first thing is forgiveness is a choice. We know that forgiveness is a choice. It's not an emotion. As a matter of fact, that emotions always lead us in different directions. It's misleading. We're con they're constantly moving. But forgiveness is a choice. It says in Ephesians 4, 31, 
Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as, as, well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. It's interesting, it says forgiving one another. It doesn't mean just forgive the people that have hurt you. It's saying forgiving one another. That means it's a two-way street. There's gonna be times you're gonna need someone to forgive you. And there's gonna be times you're gonna have to forgive somebody else. Now, let's be careful that we're not on such a high horse that we think, hmm, I just have to forgive all the people that hurt me. There's gonna be a day when we're gonna need someone to forgive us. But this is a practice that we should carry among everybody around us, especially believers in the church. Some will say, well. <laughs> Number two, forgiveness isn't fair. God never said forgiveness would be fair. It, it, it's, if, we, if we only did or received what was fair, we would all be spiritually condemned right now. Because you know what is fair? is us being condemned. What is fair is us paying for our mistakes. But, but what isn't fair is Jesus going to the cross when he did not deserve it, when he was pure and blameless and taking upon himself all of the sin, all of the shame, all of the pain, all of the backlashing, all of the offenses and saying, I'm doing this for you. This isn't fair. It says in Psalms 103.8, the Lord is merciful and loving, slow to become angry and full of constant love. He does not need to keep on rebuking. He is not angry forever. He does not punish us as we deserve wow. or repay us according to our sins and wrongs. How awesome is that? That God, there's a punishment that we deserve but he doesn't give us what we deserve. Instead, he gives us with grace, he gives us his love, his mercy, his peace, his tenderness, his grace. Number three, and this is a third point here, forgiveness has benefits in your life. Forgiveness has certain benefits in your life. One of the benefits is that when you forgive, you will be forgiven. It says in Matthew 6, 14, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Okay, so that's a big if. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. But the opposite is also true. If you refuse to forgive, your Father will not forgive your sins. Could it be that some of us in here are still carrying the penalty of the sins upon us because we refuse to forgive our offender? And we're praying, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, forgive me and purify my heart. Lord, forgive me. And God is saying, forgive him. Forgive your dad. Forgive your mom. We're saying, that wasn't you, God. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, God. Could it be that some of us are carrying that penalty still, that weight still, because we refuse to forgive the person that has hurt you? You want to know why God holds us to that standard? Is because God didn't hold you to that standard. So he's saying this. If you, if you want to apply the law and you want to condemn people, then I cannot rightfully apply righteousness and perfection and grace to you. If you want to apply law and condemnation to people around you, then I cannot give you my righteousness. I cannot give you forgiveness. The Bible says that whatever measure you use will be measured to you. If you judge, you will be judged. If you refuse to forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you hate, you're going to receive comment. It's going to happen. So we need to learn to forgive so that we can be forgiven. The last thing, forgiveness, the, the, a benefit that forgiveness has in your life is a more effective prayer life. An effective prayer life. If you feel like your prayer life has been weak, has been, has been struggling, that it's not, that there's nothing happening, and you're just thinking, man, I don't know what's going on. It's just, maybe it's just taking time. Maybe the angels are on their way, and they're stuck in traffic. I don't know what's going on. 
It could be that there's unforgiveness in our heart that are preventing us. Look at this, Matthew eleven twenty four. 24. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. That's awesome. I like that scripture. But look what 20, verse 25 says. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Could it be we're praying for these mountains to move? We're praying and we're believing, Lord, touch my bank account. Father God, touch my life. Father God, touch my family. Touch my body, Lord. To, Father, to fill everything, Lord, with your goodness. And God is saying, I would if I could, but there's unforgiveness right there. And until we deal with that, that has to go. You know that forgiveness, God can't forcefully remove unforgiveness from your heart. You have to get rid of it. The only reason forgiveness is still in your heart is not because it has a hold of you. It's because you still have a clench on it. Unforgiveness is in your heart because we refuse to let it go. We could let forgiveness fly freely and just go back to hell, but we're holding on to it. Lord, help us. I'm going to say, Lord, help me. This is what I want to do. I, I want to talk to us tonight about, I want to introduce to you a story here in our church Somebody that you know very well, I'm sure. Someone you've heard of, someone you think highly of, someone who has done great things in this ministry. They actually have been here since the beginning, really, of this ministry, done so much in this church, more behind the scenes than any of us could ever imagine, and has a story to tell on the power of forgiveness. Can we please welcome Miss Susie Zavala, our kids' children's pastor, to the stage. Let's give her a round of applause, search. Yeah. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I need my iPad. You guys are going to make me cry. Thank you. I need my iPad. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat. Susie, you have a story to tell. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people in the church realize how much you've went through in your life. You know, you've been here and you've done so much for the church, but really you are who you are today because you've been able to overcome so much. Yes. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk, to talk to the church tonight about your story of forgiveness and how you've had to forgive those who have hurt you. So why don't we start from the very top, take us back to your childhood and your upbringing. Tell us a little bit about where it all started. Okay. Well, I grew up in a family home with the white picket fence, and um, we were the spoiled kids on the block. My parents both had businesses, and they had money. And so everybody kind of even envied us. We had horses and bicycles and all the new stuff. But what most people didn't know is that my, fam my parents were alcoholics. And the more my dad would drink, the more violent he would become. And so my dad um, would physically abuse us. And so every day we were uncertain of what we were going home to. Was he going to be a happy drunk? are a really mean drunk. And my dad, the meaner he would get, the harder he would hit. And whatever was within reach, he would hit us with. So it didn't matter if it was a cord or a shovel. And then he had the craziest rule. If one of my brothers got in trouble, all three of us got spanked. If I did something wrong, they got spanked. So we were constantly like, don't do that. Don't do that. Dad's going to know. And he didn't like whip us like a little bit. He wanted to show that he was stronger than us. And so that's the childhood that I grew up in. And I was um, sharing with Chris is that... Um, <laughs> It's so long ago that 
But um, one day on a Friday, my dad woke up and he woke up in the worst mood ever. And he said, this house better be clean before I get home or else. Well, we knew what the what else was. So my older brother said, you guys go to school and I'm going to clean the house, okay? So my dad came home early and he was so mad that my brother missed school that he beat him so bad that he was hospitalized. And we knew we were next. And so that day, that weekend, um, led to the biggest fight ever. And my mom said, he, she, she told my dad, I stayed when you beat me, but I'm not gonna let you beat my kids anymore. So his rage, he lit our house on fire with us in the house. So my mom left the house with her four little kids and ran for safety. And as we were running down the street, my dad had his brand new big dually and he just rammed my mom's car. So as that was happening, we were running as fast as we could. And that was my childhood home. Wow. It just goes to show you how even though things might look good on the outside, mm -hmm. you had the white picket fence. We did. You had the money. We did. You even said that there was a point where your dad, he would beat you, and then he would try to make up for it by buying you toys, buying you the pony, buying you the bicycle. Although things may, look, may have looked good on the outside, on the inside, there was more damage being done. Yes. And he was trying to make up for it. But this goes to show us that we don't make up for the wrongs we do by trying to do good. And there's no amount of good we can do to make up for the wrongs we've done. Yeah. So we, we, if, even if, if we can't do that, why will we hold other people to that standard too? This is why we need Jesus. This is why we need the cross. Yes. Because there's only one person who was able to do enough for us to be free from yes. the pain to be free from the torment yes. and to even be set free if we're the abuser, yes. to be free from the pain because your dad had even gone through this when he was a child. Yes. So he was hurt yes. and hurting other people at the same time. Yes. So I want us to fast forward a little bit. You said your dad tried to burn the house down mm -hmm. while you guys were in it. Yes. And your mom escaped, he, the cops were called, you guys fled. But two years later, he found you guys. And what happened? So we were in hiding for two years. And it was the very first time that my mom had ever left. She went bowling with some co-workers. And so we had a neighbor was babysitting us. And there was a knock on the door. So we, I answered the door, and it was my dad. He found us. But he came with the gun. And he held a gun to my head, and he said, I have to kill you. And I'm going to kill your mom, and I'm going to kill your brothers. And the reason I have to kill you is because if I can't have you, nobody's going to have you. And back in those days, they would just arrest you and let you cool down and then let you out the next morning. By morning... We were out of there. We were in our next hiding place. We ran to hide somewhere else. And then he found us again. But by then, there was four big old teenagers. We were like, not today, Dad. You're not going to have your way. And so we were able to stand up to him, and we were telling our mom, Mom, you get behind us. There's four of us here, and we're going to take care of this. So that's... Wow. So it's just... So it sounds almost like half part of the story is thank God you guys were okay. Thank God you guys made it out. But there's another side of this coin. You guys made it out alive, 
but you made it out hurt, yes. damaged, yes. full of pain in your heart. So you began to grow up, become your own woman, um, become an adult, mm -hmm. and, you know, got married, even became a Christian. Mm -hmm. But it still affected your life. Tell us a little bit how this pain that your dad caused you and how you had unforgiveness towards him start to affect your life. Well, I, my husband and I had got saved, but I was the biggest grudge holder in the world. If you did me wrong, we're done forever. And I would justify it all the way. I'm not proud of that because that was not God's best, but I was trained by him. So I still had parts of him in me. And then I had these safeguards, not God guards, but Susie guards. And I'd be like, you are not getting close to me. You cannot come close. Do not step these boundaries. You cannot come close to me. And if you hurt me, there's no second chances. And I wasn't proud of that. And I didn't even realize that until later. And God is so good. And I don't, I'm not telling you guys to do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But I serve God and God's been so good. But I have three brothers and they're still really messed up. They haven't found God yet, but they will. They will. Amen. They, will. they will. Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's important for us to know that when, when we refuse to forgive, we're not just, we think we're just punishing the other person. We think we're holding them accountable to the faults they, they did towards us. I'm going to make you pay by, by, by pushing you out of my life. We think we're doing a, 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 we're harming them or we're getting them back. But the reality is when we refuse to give, forgive, we develop a root of bitterness that grows and causes us to hurt others the same way that we've been hurt. Yeah. And in the same way, Susie began to carry on some of the traits that her father was yeah. doing towards her. She was hurting people that hurt her. She was abusing people emotionally or verbally that hurt her, even as a saved woman, even as a believer. That's true. And so this word isn't for people that, you know, outside of this church. This word is for us in here. And maybe we're carrying on those same standards and those same traits of the person that has hurt you. Maybe it was your father that left you and abused you. Maybe it was your mother that left you and abused you. Maybe it was a, a, a spouse that hurt you. And, and maybe we're doing the same kind of, we're causing the same pain and hurt towards somebody that they caused us. Yeah. The scripture says in Hebrews 12, 15, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Mm -hmm. When we allow that root of bitterness to grow, it doesn't just hurt you, it yeah. hurts many people. Yes. It hurts your home. It hurts your marriages. Yes. It hurts our relationships. And we wonder why we can't have godly, lasting relationships. God is saying we got to deal with that root of bitterness and get rid of it yes. once and for all and deal with it yes. so that we can be free. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit. You know that your dad, he used, used to invite him to things. He wouldn't come. He didn't come to high school graduation, college graduation. He didn't make it to your wedding nothing by the, his choice by his choice mm -hmm. he would even call you the same day and say i'm not going to be there yeah. you would give him christmas gifts he would throw them away in front of your face it was constantly constantly um still causing some kind of abuse but fast yeah. forward towards the end of his life okay. you got a call out of the blue one day from your aunt tell us about that so i had just got home from work and i was making dinner and my aunt calls and she says, hi, Susie. And I'm like, why is she calling me? And I said, hey. She goes, are you sitting down? I'm like, okay. And she says, your dad is really sick. Now, I'm like, okay. And I'm trying to be nice to her. But in my heart, I'm like, why is she calling me now? She didn't call me when I'm homeless. She didn't call me when we were hungry. And she's calling to tell me this. 
And I was like, oh, okay, thanks for letting me know. So she's like, are you going to go to the hospital? I go, oh, I'll ask my husband. I'm like, why would I go to the hospital? So my husband gets home, and I tell him, hey, my Aunt Rosie called. My dad's really sick. He's dying. And he goes, really? What are you going to do? I go, I'm making dinner. <laughs> so he says, we should go because you don't want to have any kind of regret, Susie. Wow. So I said, well, and he lived in, Hem he was in the hospital in Hemet. And I was like, okay, so we have this plan. We're going to go to Hemet. We're going to go right in, right out, and we're going to go to eat. So we got a plan, right? And I'm not going to have any regrets. So we get there. And the whole way there, I'm telling my husband, I don't know why they called me. He doesn't even care about me. He's never done anything for me. My family doesn't care. Why did my aunt call? I'm like, that is so weird. So my husband just silently driving, and I'm just going on and on and on. So we get to the hospital, and we get in the elevator, and God says, honor your parents. And I'm slow, you guys, because I'm like, he is not talking to me. <laughs> like, I'm sure. So then he says again, honor your mother and your father. Wow. There's no fine print. Wow. I'm like, God. And I'm making these weird faces in the elevator. My husband thinks I'm getting sad, but I'm not. I'm wrestling with God the whole time. So we get to my dad's room, and my dad has a huge family. And I get to the door. They're like, oh, my God, she's here. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking the same thing, right? <laughs> so I walk up to my dad's bed, and I'm like, hi, Dad. He goes, um, his favorite word for me, hey, fatso. I'm like, I don't have to deal with that anymore. So I said, Dad, they said that you're dying because you don't want to amputate your second leg. He goes, that's right. If I do that, I can't take care of myself. How, what am I going to do? And I said, Dad, I'll take care of you. And he says, you can't take care of me. I know what I've done to you. And you can't. And I says, Dad, God knew before you had a daughter that you would need a daughter. And I'll take care of you. So we leave the hospital. He has his surgery. We get in the car. My husband goes, what happened? I go, I know it was God. I know. He goes, what are we going to do? I said, well, I already committed. <laughs> so we go home. He's like getting his room ready. And we're like, I don't hardly know him. Right? Well, he shows up a couple days later. And even, this is how much we didn't know him. My kids used to say, Mom, your dad wants you. I'm like, okay. So he comes. We get him in. I took care of him for two and a half years. No. I want to say... This is one of the most extraordinary stories I've heard of forgiveness. Not just a, even a verbal or a heart check, but even a forgiveness in your actions. How you not just in one moment let, let it all go, but you've also blessed your dad by taking care of him 
for the last years of his life. And this is important for us. Even though some people don't deserve mercy or forgiveness, we should show mercy and forgiveness. Why? Because we didn't deserve God's mercy or forgiveness, yet he showed it to us anyways. The Bible says in Colossians 3.13, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And this, I can see, this is a story of somebody, a real example of saying, regardless of what's happened to me, regardless if they deserve it or not, even the words he's saying in the hospital bed, he doesn't deserve it. However, I'm going to conquer unforgiveness and pain. I'm going to conquer my past by showing mercy and forgiveness and once and for all overcoming this. Come on, give God praise for that. So now, we know your brother, I'm sorry, your, your dad is dying and you're taking care of him. And for two years, he's, you know, you're taking care of him. You know, he's, he's an amputee, so you have to carry him or, or, or you know, he's in this, uh, the wheelchair and he has to go everywhere you go. If, he's, if you're going somewhere, he's going to go with you. But tell us about the time. Um, there's a day he wanted to just go on a trip with you and go shopping with you. And something happened while you guys were out shopping. Tell us about that. Well, one of the things my dad used to always say is, when I go to hell, I know hell has a place for me. I know who I am and I know what I've done. And I say, it's your choice. It's your choice. I'm going to heaven. It's your choice. So I used to like tell him, you know, like God died, gave his son to forgive you too, if you want it. Then one day he's, so I had started praying for his soul. See, I didn't have the faith for his soul. I was like, you know, he doesn't love me. He doesn't love him. He doesn't love Jesus. I don't see it. And I was a Christian. So one time he said, if I wasn't here, what would you do? I said, I would go Christmas shopping. Like, I have a family. He goes, well, I think I'm up for that. Okay. So I'm getting them ready, sticking them in the wheelchair. And I'm like, Mervyn's, Levi's, let's go. Remember Mervyn's? So, right. So we get to Mervyn's and this gentleman comes up and he says, in Spanish, if my dad knew English. I go, yeah. And I'm thinking, he's going to take my time from Christmas shopping. So he tells my dad, whatever you've done, Jesus will forgive you if you ask him to. My dad accepts Jesus at Mervyn's. And then he started saying, when I get to heaven, this is what I'm going to do. When I get to heaven, I'm going to do this. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to do this, Susie. And he really, his whole demeanor changed. His verbiage changed. Everything changed about him. And he would say, turn that music up that you listen to. I'm like, okay. My dad got saved. Come on. And he is in heaven. Yay. Come on, church. Let's give God praise. Her dad is in heaven because she decided to forgive, yes. to let it go. And because she let it go, he was able to receive forgiveness from the Father. He is now in heaven. This is the story of forgiveness that Jesus is giving you and I tonight. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. You can be forgiven tonight. It can all be washed away for good. And everybody that has hurt you, you can, you can finally once and for all forgive them tonight. Come on, give God some praise for that. Let's all stand to our feet tonight. How many are just been blessed by this story? Before anybody leaves, please, this moment is so important for us as a church. 
Right now, we have an opportunity to receive forgiveness for ourselves. And I think that that is a really important part of forgiving others is being able to forgive even yourself. Forgive yourself of your past mistakes. Forgive yourself from the faults. Forgive yourself from the, the things that you have done, even if you've been the offender or the abuser to somebody else. Let's come to the point where we finally let it go and let it rest at the feet of Jesus. But there's something, I wanna make two calls tonight. And the two calls I'm making tonight are this. If you're somebody in this room that's saying, I need to forgive somebody. Now maybe the story was not as extreme, just as extreme or more extreme than Susie's. It doesn't matter, regardless of what you've gone through, you will need the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit yes. to be able to forgive the person that's hurt you. We can't expect them or we can't depend on them to make up for it, to try and receive forgiveness. We can't ask them, we can't expect them to, to do right by us in order for us to be forgiven, or I'm sorry, for them to be forgiven. It's time once and for all to let it go. Susie one day finally said, I'm gonna let this go and I'm gonna forgive. And through that, she was free, her father was free. Not only that, but her aunt got saved, her grandma got saved, multiple people got saved because they saw what God can do through the power of forgiveness. Just imagine, as we said earlier, just imagine what will happen if we finally let go of the weight of unforgiveness tonight. By show of hands, you're saying in this room, there's somebody I need to forgive and I'm ready to let it go tonight. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three, just raise your hands all over this room. I see all those hands. I see all those hands right now. I see, that's a bold, that's a bold thing to say right now. Anybody else, you're saying that's me. I need to forgive. I see all those hands right now. I see those hands. Can you guys come forward to the front? If you raise your hand, you're saying, there's someone I need to forgive. Why don't we do this in faith? We're gonna bring that pain up here to this altar and we're gonna let it go once and for all. Come on, let's give them a hand as they make their way forward. If you raise your hand tonight, you're saying, I need to let it go. There's, some, there's something I'm holding on to. There's a pain, there's a heartache, there's a suffering, there's something that I need to let go of. Someone that has abused me, that has hurt me, that caused me pain. I need to let it go once and for all. Tonight's your night of freedom. Come forward to the front. Come on church, let's give them a round of applause as they make their way up. Thank you Jesus. I want to make another call. Maybe you're saying, I need to forgive, but I need to be forgiven. I know I've made mistakes. I've fallen. I've, I've been the offender to others. Not only that, I've offended God. I've sinned against God and I, need, I know I need forgiveness. I, I don't know if I were to die today, if I would be in heaven with Susie's father. I don't know if I would be in heaven with everybody else who, who was a sinner but got, got forgiven of their sins. I, I need forgiveness. The truth is that without forgiveness, without putting our faith in Jesus Christ, we still owe the debt of our sin. If you're saying tonight, I need to be forgiven. I wanna give my life to Jesus. I want a new beginning and a new start. And I want to know if I were to die today, that I would spend eternity with the Father in heaven. If that's you today, you're saying, I want to receive eternal life. I'm ready to repent and put my faith in Jesus. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this room. I see you guys. I see you guys up here already. I'm proud of you guys. You guys are up here. I see you back there. Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. I see you guys. Proud of you guys. I see you, I see you guys right here. Proud of you guys. If you're not up here already, could you join us? Oh, you guys are, you guys are, okay, gotcha. Awesome. Anybody else, if you raise your hand, just come front to the front if you're not up here already. We want to congratulate you and pray with you. But for everybody that came up to the front, tonight, we're letting it all go. We're getting rid of this once and for all. We're breaking the pain and the shame that forgiveness has held us in bondage to. I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. 
and I'm gonna say a prayer over you and then I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me. I'm gonna pray over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every soul that's here right now. Father God, I pray that you would begin to do surgery in their heart. Lord, there are areas in their heart, there are chambers that have been kept closed for years and years. God, there's been abuse, there's been pain, but Lord, we know that you are a tender, you're a compassionate God, and you're not going to harm them. So Father, I pray that you would, Lord, right now, very intricately, very sensitively, you begin to do surgery in their hearts, God. Begin to let, begin to uproot every root of bitterness. Begin to uproot every spirit of unforgiveness. Right now, we command the spirit of unforgiveness to let go in the name of Jesus. Right now, we release it now. Your power, your love, saturate them in your love right now in this moment in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, God, I forgive. And say their name. Say, God, I let it go and I give it to you. I forgive them for hurting me. No longer will I be bound by the pain that my past caused me. I release it to you, God. I won't hold them accountable because you didn't hold me accountable to my sin. Instead, You put my sin on the cross. You held Jesus accountable to my sin. You've shown me mercy. You've shown me grace. You've forgiven me of so much. So now, give me the power to forgive every offender in my life, every person that has hurt me. I let it go. I release them to you. As a matter of fact, I pray that you would bless them, that they would come to know you, that they would get saved, that they would get set free, and they would know you, Jesus, the same way that I know you. Set me free, God, in Jesus' name. There it goes. There it goes, in Jesus' name. There it is right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of unforgiveness, we command you right now to let go of your hold. We command you right now to break every single chain in the name of Jesus. Altar workers, just begin to lay hands. We need more leaders and altar workers, just begin to pray. Right now, we we pray, we renounce the spirit of unforgiveness and we command it to go in the name of Jesus. It has no control over their future, has no control over their mind, has no control over who they are any longer. We let it go, we let it go, we let it go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you're up here right now, just begin to pray, just begin to seek God right now, just begin to, just know that God is touching you right now in this moment. Come on, can we give God praise for all those that are right now receiving a touch from God? If you're up here, hang out. Hang out up here. We want to help you. We want to pray with you. We believe that God is touching you. And church, how many are thankful that we can see souls getting set free and saved, no longer being bound? Come on, how many are thankful for the forgiveness of Jesus Christ in our lives? Can we give Susie a round of applause and thank her for sharing her story with us. Thank you, Miss Susie. We love you, church. God bless you. If you need prayer, stay up here. We want to pray with you. And know this, we're going to continue this series on Sunday. We're going to talk about forgiveness on Sunday at our services. And next Wednesday, you're going to hear another story and it's going to be powerful. Well, we love you, church. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you.